Hello, everyone. Today we're discussing allergies, how to treat allergies, and three things you can do to prevent or reduce allergy symptoms. So we're also going to talk about how you can treat the root cause of allergies. So before we get into it, if you have not already, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching this later. That really helps us get the word out so more people can get this information. But before we begin, you're listening to Connecting the Dots with Dr. Shai. I'm your host, Lola Shai. I'm a board-certified family and lifestyle medicine doctor and owner of InTouch Primary Care, which is a concierge-like clinic in the Sugarland, Texas area, where we take a convenient and proactive approach to your health care. For more information, check us out at InTouchPrimaryCare.com, InTouchPrimaryCare.com. Okay, so let's get into it. Allergic rhinitis, which is allergies, is quite common in children and adults, and it affects about 10 to 30% of people in the United States. And pollen is the most common trigger for seasonal allergies. And pollen comes from trees, it can come from grass or from weeds. So if you live in the Houston area, pollen is usually around year round, but can be worse at certain times of the year. Allergy symptoms vary from person to person. So some common symptoms are like sneezing. Some people have drip going down their throat. Some others have stuffy noses or sinus headaches, itchy eyes, nose, throat, or palate. Um, some people can have a dry cough or just feel tired and irritable. So allergies ha has, um, people with allergies have a variety of symptoms. In adults, um, Allergies, but allergies can significantly impact our quality of life, right? So it's been associated with general conditions, um, several conditions and behaviors in children, like ADHD. It's been associated with lower exam scores during peak allergy season, poor concentration, impaired athletic performance, and even low self-esteem. So um, Allergies in children can actually significantly affect um, their quality of life. Also in adults, it's been associated with anxiety, depression, reduced academic performance and worse work productivity, and um, even lower than productivity for people that have just asthma. Also has been associated with impaired um, performance during sexual activity. It's been associated with lower quality of life scores generally. So allergies should be addressed. They, it shouldn't be ignored because it can severely affect people's lives. So how are allergies diagnosed? Most people can be diagnosed clinically. That's by just talking to their doctor. Some doctors might have you fill out a questionnaire and um, a lot of times the symptoms are pretty um, obvious. However, to know exactly what's causing the allergy symptoms, you can have skin testing, which is a pretty good test for diagnosis. Although it has some limitation in that you should be off your allergy medicine for the skin testing. And so that's where having a serum testing can be helpful because um, with serum testing, you does it doesn't require you to stop your allergy medication or other medications that can interfere with skin testing. So for people or for people that have like skin conditions and do not want to do skin tests. So there are options for testing to determine the specific cause of allergies. All right, so let's get into it. What are three things you can do to prevent or reduce allergy symptoms? So right now, if you're having trouble with allergies, what are three things you can do? The first one is to avoid or limit exposure to allergens. And so this is things like, you know, you stay away when they're mowing the lawn or pulling weeds or when people are gardening. You want to stay away from things that will stir up the pollen. Um, you can check the weather and find out when pollen is, when we have a high pollen count. And then in those days, on those days, you may want to try to stay inside, especially when the pollen is high. Um, the rain clears pollen from the air. So going outside after it rains is best. And pollen counts are typically highest early in the morning. So if you typically take a work, 
a walk early in the morning and you have allergies and the pollen counts are going to be high, you may want to delay that a little bit. You could also change your clothes when you get home. So if you have allergies and um, you, you know, you were outside and there was pollen outside, you wanted to change your clothes and take a shower so you get all the pollen off of your body and your hair. You also don't want to hang laundry outside because pollen can stick to your clothing and then cause problems later. And then you can wear a pollen mask. So that can be helpful. So that's um, the first thing you can do to uh, uh, is avoid or limit exposure to the allergens. allergens. And there are many ways you can do that for, um, for allergens. The other thing you can do, so this will be for people that may be indoors and maybe allergic to dust or, or mold or other things, you can get a HEPA filter, H-E-P-A filter, which is a high efficiency particulate air filter. And it said that HEPA filters remove at least 99.97% of dust, pollen, mold, bacteria, and any airborne particles that are very small. So um, it's helpful to have a HEPA filter if you suffer with allergies, especially if um, you know, it's something that affects you at home as well. The third thing you can do is treat the allergy symptoms. So this is important because, like I said, allergies can really impact quality of life. So there's definitely an advantage to treating it. And there are two ways that it can be treated. The first way is just treat, you know, with medications over the counter. The second way is to treat the root cause. So to treat with over the counter medications, you can do like um, the steroid nasal sprays are actually the, what has been found to be the single most effective treatment for allergies. So that's things, things like fluticasone, which is Flonase, Mometasone, which is Nasonex, um, there's Nasocort, there's Rhinocort, and Cunasal. So those are all examples of um, intranasal steroids that can be helpful and have been shown to be very effective for allergy treatments. Some people um, have a hard time with those. You can also use antihistamine nasal sprays like azelestin. They are also quite effective and they can be used with nasal sprays, with steroid nasal sprays too. So for people that don't get all the, you know, still have symptoms after using nasal sprays, the steroid nasal sprays, you can use antihistamine nasal sprays as well. Now, there are medications, and many people are probably more familiar with the tablets, so a lot of them are antihistamines, and a lot of them are second-generation antihistamines, so they don't make you as sleepy as, say, Benadryl, for example, but there are many of them as well. They're all pretty similar. A lot of people can use one for a while, and many times they may have to switch to another one because it doesn't seem to work as well after a while. But generally speaking, there's the sterazine, loratadine, levosterazine, fexofenadine. These are all, or they're also known as Zyrtec, Claritin, Allegra. These are all those over-the-counter medications that can be taken for allergies. And then for people that have eye symptoms, you can also use eye drops for treatment of allergies. Um, so there are antihistamine eye drops that um, can be used if the eye symptoms don't respond well to regular, um, to all the other medications we talked about. And then um, for children that, for children where we're avoiding the nasal steroids in young children, they can use chromaline nasal sprays, which can be prescribed um, for allergies for young children. Also, rinsing out sin your sinuses can be quite helpful um, to prevent um, frequent symptoms. So if you're having frequent symptoms, doing a nasal rinse can be quite helpful and doing that regularly. So those are some things that you can do in terms of treating the cause and just treating the symptoms. And all of these things or some of these things, depending on where you are, and how severe your symptoms are can be helpful. But if you're having symptoms year round or most of the year or your symptoms are pretty severe, then you probably want to consider a more permanent solution to allergy, to your allergies. And there are two things you can do in that scenario. One of them is to do allergy shots, which um, some of you may be familiar with, which is basically injecting um, the allergens 
it exposes you to a tiny amount of the allergens over time, and it's very effective in reducing symptoms. The allergy shots, though, one of the drawbacks is it does mean you have to go many times. You you should see a doctor to do this. It's not safe to try to do to self-administer allergy shots. Um, you should have an EpiPen if you're if you are um, doing allergy shots, just in case you have a bad reaction to it. So there are, it's a little bit more limited because there are a lot of things that should be in place to do it safely and to do it well. So that's with allergy shots. But there is another option, which is an option that we provide at our practice, which is allergy drops. So allergy drops is self-administered where you take the drops on your own and um, you do that one to um, two to three times a day on your own and um, it is just, it's very effective as well in treating allergies and it's a lot more convenient um, for patients. So that those are the two ways you can actually treat the root cause of allergies. So that's what I wanted to share today. Remember, you can make it easier, um, reduce and um, even prevent allergy symptoms by avoiding or limiting exposure to allergens. You can get a HEPA filter, or you can treat allergies with either medications or you can treat the root cause if you have more severe allergy symptoms or just bothersome allergy symptoms, or especially if you have year-round allergy symptoms. Thank you for listening. Remember, if you're watching us later on YouTube, please subscribe and share with someone. You never know how much of a difference it can make for them. And if you are anywhere in Texas, and you're interested in learning more about our allergy program, please give us a call 713-280-9985 to learn more. Our allergy program is open to all, even if you're not a patient of ours. Remember, your health is too important to rush, too important to ignore. You need your health to enjoy doing what you, what you love. So prioritize your health today. If you know anyone that might need this, again, please share with them. And thank you for watching. Have a great day.